We're still waiting here for the verification of the extent of the injury to Ruffian, who broke down on the back stretch here in this match race this afternoon. We knew it was pretty bad right away. Nothing can take away the horror of seeing a horse break down. It's like seeing a masterpiece just uh, being destroyed. Dr. Gilman had put an inflatable cast on her, and he walked away from her, and there was blood over his hands, both hands. I said, Doc, what happened to her? He said, well, the bones were pulverized, and they exploded like a hand grenade inside the ankle. And that's where the blood is from. And I remember saying to him, How, what's the prognosis? And he said, not good. It didn't take me a second to see how badly she was broken down. She actually had a compound fracture where parts of the bones were sticking right out through the back of the skin. And it was bleeding quite a bit. And there was dirt in it, and uh, it was a mess. She looked confused. She looked scared. And they managed to get her on a van and get her back to the barn. She should have been put down on the spot, but it would have been... We'd been almost lynched if we hadn't made an attempt. Because this horse was really at that point already an icon and a public figure and had broken down on national TV, her owners could not just immediately put her down. Miss Janet didn't do it wasn't much chance, much shot for her. And he said to me, he said, Frank, said, we have to take a chance. That operate on her. Ruffian was taken to Dr. William Reed's Equine Hospital across the street from Belmont Park. Every attempt was made to keep this filly alive. You put yourself in a position of saying, well, I'll do everything I can do, the best we can do it, but going into it, you know you have no chance. They had put this cast on her, and if she didn't kick the cast off, she might survive. As she was coming out of anesthesia, she had no control over herself, and she was just fighting. That was part of her makeup. She, she was a fighter. She started running in place, laying on her side, and shattered her elbow into hundreds of pieces. It was like cracked ice. Of course, that was the swan song. We couldn't go any further. Hardhill was talking us out the door. Dr. Reed reached out and grabbed him by the shoulder, and he says, we're going to do it. At 2.20 a.m., Ruffian was put down. You had this perfect specimen. You had all our hopes of seeing an incredible athletic performance, having seen it in some of her races, and, and then the opportunity to see it in this match race. And then suddenly it's all ashes. I just remember my daughter, who was about six or seven years old at the time. It just absolutely broke her heart. She was the Titanic going down. She was unsinkable. God, what a tremendous, tremendous sense of him. Just sadness, just terrible, terrible sadness. Ruffian running through the warnings of pain, knowing what she was doing, was not going to give up until she fell over. It was the courage which doesn't make sense, but which we all admire. It was such a shock that people felt like they lost something and that some part of what they had hoped for or believed in was gone. I was in Delaware and I'm watching it on television. And Delaware Park the next morning was like a tomb. Everybody was in tears. I almost punched somebody out that was in our shed that said something derogatory about Frank's training. And I grabbed him by the throat and burst into tears. I ran into one of the girls who worked with me at the barn and I said, how'd the filly do last night? She, God, didn't you hear? And then I remember the two of us just standing there in the track kitchen crying. I know people that tuned in to that race to maybe watch their first horse race. And later they found out that she had to be euthanized. They never watched another horse race again. I walked to the barn by 5.30 in the morning. And Mr. Wiley came to me and said, Jack, don't feel bad, this part of the business. He said, we got to go on. 17 hours after her death, 
ruffian was laid to rest in the Belmont Park infield. In defiance of the tradition, which is just to bury a part of the horse, ruffian was completely wrapped like a mummy in a shroud and lowered into the grave that was dug in the infield. And then Frank, who had been carrying Ruffian's regular blanket during the procession over to the gravesite, handed the stable hand the blanket at the last minute and said, go down there and put that over. Behind a wave of sadness and regret came a strong reanalysis of match races. I think they stink. You're trying to kill two animals for no reason. Run a, a horse in full speed mile and a quarter, you're gonna kill him. Horse racing isn't necessarily about one horse versus another. It's not boxing and it's not survival. Every time I see somebody suggest a match race, I think about Ruffian. At the time, nobody said, well, they better not have a race because somebody might get hurt. It was the tenor of the times. After this tremendous buildup, national television coverage, writers in from everywhere writing about these two horses, and then she breaks down. And it was as if the sport never stopped exhaling. It just knocked the wind out of the sport. Somehow, something great had been on this earth, and now it was gone. Like the athlete dying young, it's an unfinished story. And so the wound stays open, the pain stays. But I think this glory, this glorious feeling stays also.